Properties of rational exponents and radicals. Remember from previous classes, a rational number is any number that can be written in the form a over b. So basically we're going to be talking about exponents that are fractions. And radicals are square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, etc. So we're going to be talking about properties of both rational exponents and radicals. State standards are listed. To be successful, you need to be able to simplify a radical expression with rational exponents, explain when radical expressions are in simplest form, and simplify variable expressions containing rational exponents and radicals. So we're going to be simplifying and explaining. A lot of times we're going to be rewriting these in different forms. So vocabulary, simplest form of a radical. An expression involving a radical with index n is in simplest form when these three conditions are met. No radicands have perfect n powers as factors other than 1. No radicands contain fractions. No radicands appear in the denominator of a fraction. To meet the last two conditions, rational, rationalize the denominator by multiplying the expression by an appropriate form of 1 that eliminates the radical from the denominator. And we'll go over that in more detail in some of the examples. For now, make sure this is in your notes so that you have the vocabulary words. One more vocabulary like radicals, radical expressions with the same index and radican are like radicals. So you do have to have like radicals if you're adding and subtracting radicals. And again, we'll look at that in examples. Properties of rational exponents. So you have seen properties of exponents before. Properties of rational exponents are going to be very similar. Again, rational exponents means we're dealing with fractions. So dust up on your fractions a little bit because we will be using those today. All right, uh, one thing that is a common error for students, when you have the same base and you're multiplying, you add exponents. A lot of times because this is called the product of powers, you are multiplying m or a to the m power times a to the n power. So you are multiplying. There is a product here, but you actually add your exponents. So be careful with that. When you have a power raised to a power, that's when you multiply your two powers together. And then if you have the power of a product, that means each thing inside the parentheses is raised to that power. Negative exponent, remember that gets moved to the denominator and becomes positive. And then, of course, the variable can't be zero because you can't divide by zero. The zero exponent, anything to the zero power equals one. Quotient means divide, so same base. When you divide, you subtract. And then power of a quotient. That means if you have a quantity, this is in parentheses, everything inside the parentheses gets raised to that power. And then here's examples of them with rational exponents. Properties of radicals, let a and b be real numbers such that the indicated roots are real numbers and let n be an integer greater than one. So the product property here, if you have a radical and you've got an index here of n, this shows you that you can split these up and write them as two different things and the index will stay the same even when you separate it. Um, and here we have quotient property, same thing. If you have a quotient, quotient means divide, you have division and all of it's under the same index, n. You can divide the numerator and denominator and write that with the index n as well. And again, there's examples there to go by. Example one, using properties of exponents. Use the properties of rational exponents to simplify each expression. All right, for a part, you have the same base. Remember when we're multiplying and we have the same base, we add exponents. So if we add exponents, we're going to have 7 to the 1 fourth times and then 1 half to add 
fractions, you have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to rewrite that as two-fourths. Two-fourths is the same as one-fourth. But again, I'm adding fractions. So I'm going to keep my base. One-fourth plus two-fourths is three-fourths. So that one's going to be seven to the three-fourths power. All right, so it just says use your properties to simplify. This is as simple as we can get it um, using our properties of exponents. All right, so B part says 6 to the 1 half times 4 to the 1 third, all of that squared. So since they have a different base, let's go ahead and do the power to the power. So since these, um, both of these are in parentheses, that means both of these are raised to that power. Remember when you have a power to a power, you multiply. So we're going to have 6 to the 1 half, and that's going to be squared. And then we're going to have times 4 to the 1 third, and that's going to be squared. All right, so half of 2, 6 raised to the half power and the two powers. So half of two is just one. So that means this is going to be six times four, and then one third times two is two thirds. So four to the two thirds power. C part says four to the fifth times three to the fifth and all of that's quantity raised to the negative one-fifth power. Since both of those are to the same power, we can use the power of product property. So we can say that this is four times three. I'm saying it, but I'm not writing it correctly. Okay, let's see. So I've got four times three raised to the fifth power raised to the negative one-fifth power. So now we can say 4 times 3 is 12, and we have that to the 5th and the negative 1 fifth. 5 times negative 1 fifth, or 1 fifth of 5, is just going to be negative 1. So this is going to be 12 to the negative 1, and we know that that equals 1 over 12. And again, we're just using our properties of exponents to simplify and rewrite these. All right, D part is 5 divided by 5 to the 1 third power. So I'm going to rewrite that as 5 to the 1st over 5 to the 1 third. Okay, because if it does not have an exponent, you can assume that it's a 1. And then, again, if I have the same base and I have a quotient, that means I have to subtract exponents from top to bottom. So I'm going to have to have a common denominator again. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 3 over 3. And the denominator is 5 to the 1 third. Okay, the reason I did that was so now they both have, both fractions have the same denominator. So now I can subtract. So I keep my base. 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. Probably never imagined you'd go back to doing fractions when you got to high school, but we do a lot of fractions in high school. All right, E part says 42 to the 1 third divided by 6 to the 1 third. All of that quantity is squared. So since I have both of the numbers inside the parentheses raised to the 1 third power, I can rewrite this as 42 divided by 6 to the 1 third squared. And the reason I want to do that, that's the power of a quotient. 46 um, divided, or sorry, 42 divided by 6 is just 7. So because those numbers divide evenly, it just simplifies pretty quick. And then I've got 7 to the 1 third squared. 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. So this one's going to be 7 to the 2 thirds power. words and math. In everyday life, a property of an object or idea is a quality or attribute of it. A mathematical property describes attributes of numbers and expressions. 
Example two, properties of radicals. Use the properties of radicals to simplify each expression. So we have the cube root of 12 times the cube root of 18. So we know that both of those are cube roots, so we can put those together. So we can say the cube root of 12 times 18. So we're gonna have the cube root of what number? So let's say 12 times 18, and that's going to be 216. So now I need the cube root of 216. We can use our calculator to find that. So we have, it's probably going to be 6, but we need 6 times 6 times 6. That would be 216. But let's check it. So we've got math, and here's cube root number 4. So we've got cube root of 216. So that's how you would do that in your calculator. And again, that is 6. B par is the fourth root of 80 divided by the fourth root of 5. So we can use the quotient property to say that if we have a fourth root of both, we can do 80 divided by 5 first and then take the fourth root. All right, so we got the fourth root of, and then five goes to end to eight one time, and then that leaves three, so that would be three, zero, thirty. Five goes into thirty six times. So we need the fourth root of 16. Now be careful here. A lot of times people see this, and they want to say the answer is four. So the answer is actually two. Remember, the fourth root, the index, has to match the exponent of whatever this number is. So 2 to the 4th power, um, and then times 1 fourth, which the 4th root is the same as 1 fourth power, would give you 2. If you want to use your calculator to check that to make sure you don't do it incorrectly, you can go to the x root power here. So We have to start by putting in the 4th root. So 4, go to math, 5, and then 16, and then that's going to give you your answer of 2.